Hi all. I had an interesting win last night against Jeff Goldberg. I was playing black and I punted the Slav defence and he played the exchange variation. But now he played knight c3 and I remembered a gambit variation from covering um, the series on the Slav you might want to check out. And there was this gambit with e5 played in the last Olympiad which um, we had a quick look at. After d takes e5 I played d4 and he retreats his knight back to b1 now. I think if knight e4, by the way, um, then queen a5 check and knight c6 uh, is okay because I'm, I'm sort of putting a lot of pressure on e5. And if knight b5, then that loses a piece to queen a5. So the knight went back to b1. So knight c6. And I've got a kind of, you know, accelerated Albin counter gambit in a way. After knight f3, I was thinking, do I want to just play, um, say, bishop g4 or bishop f5? But then it occurred to me that queen a5 check might be quite annoying. Because um, after bishop d2, which he played, I've got queen b6. And I thought, how does he you know, defend b2? Because he doesn't really want to put his queen on, on the c file. Because then you know, I might be able to gain an extra tempo later after moving the bishop and, and then rook c8. So actually, he offers a queen exchange with queen b3. Problem is, I'm going to get my pawn back. And this pawn on e5 is going to be vulnerable. So we'll see that now. I take on b3 and now bishop e6. And um, there's some critical lines here which, uh, you know, thankfully I have some resources. Uh, he plays knight a3, which, considering the pawn on d4 stopping, you know, it going to c3, that's a reasonably good move. Because now there's kind of threats of knight b5 and knight c4. But I take on b3 anyway. And I didn't fear knight b5 which he didn't play anyway. Let's have a look. He played e3, but let's have a look. Knight b5. And so if he's attacking d4, and he's also threatening knight c7 check, which does limit my options a little bit. Uh, and say I castled here, then he can pick up the a7 pawn. And this isn't you know very good for black. But what I did see was actually rook d8. Because now knight takes a7, I've got rook a8. So, and here, if knight c7 then king d7 knight b5 and I, I was looking myself at king e7 but apparently Rivka thinks bishop c5 and black's fine as well so he didn't go in for this um, after, after bishop takes b3 he just played e3 which kind of surprised me because I thought I'm going to get another tempo for development now or he's going to have these horrible double pawns uh, if I take on e3 so after d takes e3 he took a bishop and you know let me play bishop b4 check after bishop d2 though there's another sort of branch here do i want to um take on d2 or do i want to castle and um i i just eventually decided i, I want to castle queenside it just looked too tempting um even though you know my king on the c file is a bit of a target now for white, uh, as we'll see, after taking on b4, he's got rook c1 check, and now he's got rook c3. But um, a lot of the complications are over, and I'm just concerned about naturally developing my pieces now, and also you know keeping my pieces centralised. So in this squad, I just play bishop d5. It's also potentially you know putting more pressure on e5 later if I've got a constant threat. Bishop takes f3. After bishop e2, I now play knight e7. Because I think the knight's actually best here. Uh, it would be supporting this knight and also putting more pressure on e5. So after castles, knight ec6. And I'm really pleased with my position at the opening. Uh, he plays knight c4. And now I put more pressure on e5 by rook he8. Noting that um, he can't play knight d6 here. Because he's, because then rook takes d6 and that lovely pin on the bishop. So I'd be winning two pieces there. So after rook h8, I thought great position. My, my position is really kind of aesthetic as well. The rooks are blasting down in the center. You know, these pieces are, are well placed. He plays rook d1. And immediately now I aim to win a pawn. I know it's quite kind of greedy, but I think it's... The logical outcome at the moment of, of this pressure on e5 and the opening. I play the move b5. So potentially I'm weakening my king a little bit. I have to factor in you know, white's potential rook b3s, but I thought that was harmless because you know, if a5 later, I couldn't see anything you know, as compensation. 
But um, so after knight e3, I, t I take on f3. He takes with his g pawn. He doesn't take with the bishop. And instead of actually uh, taking on e5, I actually play knight d4 because I want to protect b5 and I want to take with my rook. So knight d4 gives me an extra tempo. He protects his bishop and I take on e5. So I'm a pawn up at the moment and also he's got these shattered pawns here, isolated pawn here. But um, he develops a little bit of counterplay now. He plays f4 and he activates his bishop very soon. After rook e e8, he plays rook c5, so he's attacking b5, I protect it, and now rook e5. And now I put this knight more into the centre, protecting the other one, um, encouraging a rook exchange. And now after bishop d3, I want to try and restrict the scope of this bishop. So I play g6, but now he tries to dissolve his double pawns. And I was wondering, you know, do I want to um, play... Uh, gf and potentially you know liberate some of his pieces or i just want to play g5 i eventually decided g5 even though you know there's some danger here potentially with f6 and this pawn you know being quite dangerous because then he'd also be you know threatening my pawn on h7 but anyway he plays knight d5 and already if you know rook e5 i can't play too casually because then knight f6 attacking h7 and threatening knight d7 check winning the rook it's got to be a, li a little bit careful here I play rook d8 plays bishop e4 and now I play rook d6 because I'm a bit worried about him playing f6 and I want at least a little bit of pressure on it also another idea was just rook h6 but he shuts my rook out with f6 so he's maintaining you know this potentially you know nice knight on d5 um, so here I have to come up with another plan. The plan I, I come up with is h5, because I have to protect that pawn anyway. And I thought it might be useful for g4 and knight f3 to try and get rid of this bishop and increase you know, the intensity of this pin. So the whole idea is basically trying to undermine d5 at the moment. He plays h3, I play g4. But this, these pawns are a bit loose. Maybe you know, I'm mucking up my position a little bit. Um, because you know maybe he could have just taken and king g2 um, to try and get his king to attack that pawn. Uh, let's have a quick look at that actually. So here, what would I have played? Well, maybe you know black has got knight e6. Ribka still likes black's position here. So anyway, in the game though, he played actually king g2 first. And I decided to take on h3, and maybe that was a slight mistake. Maybe you know preferable is knight e6 um, with the idea of knight c5. But that occurred in the game. I actually just played g takes first and now knight e6. So I'm going to be playing knight c5 to try and undermine this, this knight on d5 and force the bishop away from it. It's quite a nice central square. Because there's also in some variations some threats of bishop g6 potentially to try and liberate this pawn. So I wanted that bishop to be you know less centralised. So, um, after king h4, I play knight c5, he plays bishop c2, still on that critical diagonal. And now knight d7, I really want to get rid of that pawn before it becomes dangerous in the endgame. And here he blunders badly, he plays king takes h5, and I wonder if you can spot the tactic now. Um, I'll give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, the tactic, rook takes d5 check. So I'm just picking up a whole knight now. I've successfully undermined the d5 knight, which is by taking it. So rook takes d5, knight takes f6. So I'm just the knight up, and the rest is kind of technique. I want to try and hold on to the f-pawn, just to make sure um, I don't slip up. And uh, I bring my king in to protect that knight on d5. Just create a pass to a-pawn, start pushing that. And um, here, I, I was, this is quite nifty, I thought, offering that knight temporarily, which he didn't take. Because if, he, if he'd taken now, then there's knight d4 check. King moves, king takes, and I'm going to be taking and then queening. But um, 
he didn't do that. He just played bishop a2. Check. I took his pawn. He's got no chance of a win now. He can only draw. No mating material. And I just bring my king and play f5. He resigns. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.